A career in Merchant Navy is a unique blend of variety and compass in a single domain. By opting for a Merchant Navy career, individuals can combine a lot of different facets and gain a lot of exposure in terms of professionalism, adaptability and travel. In this video, we are going to tell you 10 such points which make Merchant Navy careers so singular and completely unlike any. There are very few lines of work around the world that pay the kind of salary to entry level officers as the Merchant Navy does. A very big incentive for anyone to take up a profession is the allure of pay packages and salaries. Starting at about 1200 US dollars and extending up to about 3000 US dollars per month. Note that this is notwithstanding the training period for approximately a year wherein a stipend is paid out ranging between 400 to 800 US dollars. However, due to the current job crisis, freshers and first time deck officers and engineers are facing hard time to get a job on board ship. Paying taxes is a responsibility that everyone is aware of. However, people involved in the merchant marine are exempted from paying taxes in several countries if they meet the requirements necessary for exemption purpose. A merchant marine professional has to spend a minimum of 6 months on duty aboard a vessel, following which the professional will be exempt from paying tax for the specified financial year. This is not a professional tax advice and laws differ among countries so it is best to check up on the local tax laws. People involved in the Merchant Navy get to experience exotic destinations across the whole world. And since jobs in the Merchant Navy require an individual to spend extended periods of time at sea, there is no dearth of time when it comes to exploring these singular destinations. While the work on board in ports takes up half the time, the other half is available to visit the new countries as long as the vessel is alongside. Due to current COVID-19 restrictions, all the shore lives are now stand cancelled. A professional involved in a merchant marine career gets to meet and mingle with people of different cultures and nationalities. This helps the individual to understand and function better as a team player and learn the nuances of different cultures and traditions at the same time. This automatically increases adaptability and brings more awareness about what goes and what doesn't in a different country. Even if a ship employs a single nationality crew, working with the port officials from different countries also adds a great deal of awareness among seafarers about cultures and customs. Working in the Merchant Navy enables individuals to function better as a unit. Merchant Mariners are required to possess good communication skills and extreme resourcefulness along with maintaining high discipline. These qualities are further honed when a person spends a considerable amount of time functioning as a part of a noble team in the high seas. Merchant Navy careers offer a lot of exposure to unexpected events, situations and emergencies. By facing such unmitigated events, professionals gain a widespread knowledge about dealing and facing such problems. The aspect of professionalism also kicks in wherein the ability to be quick with decisions and problem solving is paramount. A career in Merchant Marines is like having adventures on a day-to-day -day basis. Other routine jobs involve people having to spend 9 hours in an office. This is not for people who like 9-to-5 jobs. Merchant Mariners get to explore and view the excellent oceanic vista for days on end which acts as an inspiration unlike any. Being at the mercy of ocean naturally demands a considerable level of commitment from one's part. 
one has to be sharp at all times, ready to face the perils of the sea as well as the ship and her crew. A career in Merchant Navy can be taken up immediately after clearing the high school examination with subjects like physics and mathematics. For those that aspire to be regular seamen, the Merchant Marine provides opportunity like no other in that with minimal qualification a person can be assured a good pay and the prospect of extensive travel. Having said that, there are careers in the Merchant Navy that require high qualifications as well. The kind of subjects taught while an individual is undergoing his training at an institute can be extensive, from astronomy to engineering to celestial navigation and maritime law. The study in the shipping field covers a wide array of knowledge. Since the oceans are highly unpredictable, a seafarer has to be highly cautious, focused and alert to counter any eventuality, thereby reducing the repercussion substantially. These two qualities are imbibed in maritime professionals right from their training days. Since the nature of the Merchant Navy job requires long working periods, the vacations offered to Merchant Marine professionals are equally compensating. This enables these professionals to enjoy the best of both worlds, land and water. A 2-4 to four months vacation is definitely long enough to unwind and follow all your passion. There is absolutely no stress of work while a seafarer is back home and he gets to enjoy the time with his family to the fullest. Like every other job, Merchant Navy career also has its own set of cons which we will let you know in our future video. There is a company dedicated to making this world a better place to live and pioneering uncharted territories. Hanjin Heavy Industries and Construction has built the history of Korea's shipbuilding industry while paving the way for the global shipbuilding industry as well. Hanjin Heavy Industries and Construction works to realize dreams and to create a brighter future for all. Hanjin Heavy Industries and Construction strongly believes technological development is the key to the successful future of the global shipbuilding industry. We stay true to our belief and surprise the whole world by accomplishing the impossible. We fought against poor weather conditions and lack of infrastructure and manpower and created a cutting edge shipyard. We are preparing ourselves to take a big leap forward through the completion of our world-class Subic Shipyard. Hanjin Heavy Industries and Construction's Subic Shipyard located in the Philippines is about to set new standards in the world's shipbuilding industry. For two years, Hanjin Heavy Industries and Construction has made continuous efforts to successfully localize ourselves in the Philippines and to establish highly efficient production facilities. Now, our Subic Shipyard, as one of the most established overseas manufacturing bases, is capable of building mega vessels with docks 5 and 6, which are two of the world's largest docks. 3.3 kilometer quays, 1,000 meter assembly yard, and painting shops. And wins wide admiration by ship owners all over the world. We are determined to acquire the reputation as the world's best shipyard, capable of creating high added value in ship construction, such as supersized container carriers and super tankers. This will serve as a new prime mover for Hanjin Heavy Industries and Construction to make bigger progress and grow into a truly global premier shipbuilder.
Our skill development center at the Subic Shipyard is meticulously designed to foster a well-trained local workforce. The Philippines used to lack shipbuilding technologies. However, backed by Hanjin Heavy Industries and Construction's wealth of knowledge and know-how, over 10,000 experts are being brought up every year. With an advanced HSE system, Hanjin Heavy Industries and Construction promises a healthy and safe environment. In addition, inspectors are provided with the best welfare facilities. In addition, the Mindanao Shipbuilding Complex, a project jointly implemented by Hanjin Heavy Industries and Construction and Subic Shipyard, is being praised as an exemplary case of turning the challenge into an opportunity and is expected to emerge as a major shipbuilding production center. The dream to build global ships will come true at the Subic Shipyard with perfect quality, basic safety, and a pleasant environment. The Subic Shipyard will achieve the dream for increased values and happiness. Hanjin Heavy Industries and Construction is an internationally recognized premier shipbuilder that has aggressively pursued excellence throughout its distinguished seven-decade-long history. The Yungdo Shipyard in Busan. This is where Korea's shipbuilding industry first took off. It encompasses world-class facilities that can build a total of one million deadweight tons per year. It is the heart and soul of Korea's shipbuilding industry. All Hanjin Heavy Industries and construction plants are connected to the Yangdo Shipyard in Busan like blood vessels. First, the Yuldo plant in Incheon encompassing 122 acres supports new ship construction of Yangdo. It processes 175,000 tons of steel a year at its state-of-the-art GPE block construction facility. The Dadepo plant in Busan is responsible for assembling and painting all deck houses needed by the Yungdo shipyard and is supplying the finished products to Yungdo and Subic shipyards. It also produces four blocks. A collaboration of plants with different specialties enable more efficient and advanced production, helping Hanjin Heavy Industries and construction remain at the leadership position in the shipbuilding industry. Hanjin Heavy Industries and Construction, which has designed and built many of Korea's first and the world's best ships, takes pride in its state-of-the-art technologies far outdistancing others. First, the container carriers. Hanjin Heavy Industries and Construction has constructed the world's best containers and is now in the process of building a mega-sized over 10,000 TEU model. Hanjin Heavy Industries and Construction succeeded in constructing a membrane LNG carrier for the first time in Asia and thus emerged as an LNG carrier specialist. We recently came up with a new LNG carrier model with advanced technologies and plan to globalize our LNG carrier business in close association with the Subic Shipyard. Hanjin Heavy Industries and Construction, which set a series of new records in the field of tankers, recently received the order of a 320,000 ton VLCC construction and once again proved to the world its reputation as a top shipbuilder. Hanjin Heavy Industries and Construction, the maker of bulk carriers acclaimed for customer satisfaction, recently received orders for a number of 180,000 ton Cape size vessels and began building supersized bulk carriers in full force. Hanjin Heavy Industries and Construction, which was designated as the nation's first defense contractor in 1974, has the most extensive experience in new construction of naval ships, such as landing crafts, amphibious ships, midget submarines, and patrol ships. The Dokdo vessel delivered to the Korean Navy in 2007 is a multi-purpose 14,000 ton troop ship, armed with advanced technologies 
befitting the world's top shipbuilding nation. From Korea's first ever government-operated icebreaker to diving support vessels, salvage vessels and oceanographic vessels, we boast unparalleled expertise in new vessel development and construction expertise in the Coast Guard security vessel industry. In 2009, the Araon, Korea's first ever ice-breaking research vessel, was launched. The Araon is a high-tech vessel designed for operation in one-meter-thick, multi-year ice conditions with a three-knot speed per hour in extreme temperatures of minus 30 degrees Celsius and is equipped with a 25-ton crane, helicopter, and 60 different types of research equipment. The success of its test voyage to the Antarctic in February 2010 has given Korean citizens confidence in Korea's future and has shown Hanjin Heavy Industries and Construction's advanced know-how and technological expertise to the world. Now, Hanjin Heavy Industries and Construction will expand its specialized expertise, such as offshore plants and FPSOs, by maximizing the mutual synergy effect of the Subic Shipyard and the Yongdo Shipyard. Hanjin Heavy Industries and Construction is opening up a new era with a new vision based on its corporate philosophy of management for creation. The R&D Center, Hanjin Heavy Industries and Construction's think tank, is where innovative technologies are born, providing turning points to the history of Korea's shipbuilding. A skid that piles 3,000 ton GPE blocks with a crane to reduce the construction term. EGW that shortened the welding time by 10 times. The revolutionary dam method that enabled underwater welding. The lifting off launch method utilizing a 3,000 ton marine crane. And the shelter that enables ship construction in inclement weather conditions are some of the methods created thanks to their passion and commitment to thinking outside the box. The Philippines' Subic Shipyard with its cutting-edge production system, is expected to serve as a driving force behind Hanjin Heavy Industries and Construction's development in the 21st century and the most significant outcome of the management for creation philosophy. Our R&D Center, Yongdo Shipyard and Subic Shipyard work in close collaboration to maintain the world's most efficient production system and maximize competitiveness. That is how Hanjin Heavy Industries and Construction stays at the forefront as the builder of high added value ships and mega sized ships. Hanjin Heavy Industries and Construction also promote sustainable development through reaching out to the communities, sharing with them our goal of advancing the well being of people and the planet. Hanjin Heavy Industries and Construction has always offered breakthroughs as the shipbuilding industry's leader and created new hopes and visions to build a brighter future. Hanjin Heavy Industries and Construction is striving to take another leap forward to become the world's best shipbuilder that brings changes to the world, that brings improvements to the world. Watch us turn dreams into reality. Hanjin Heavy Industries and Construction. On the shores of the Gulf of Mexico, engineers are building a technological masterpiece called Perdido. 45,000 tons of steel will be transformed into the most advanced oil rig in the world. This rig will plunge its drills nearly three kilometers down to the sea floor. A giant in the extreme world of offshore engineering. 8th of August, 2008. Today is a big day for the builders of Perdido. They are moving the bottom half of their oil rig from the construction dock in Texas out into the ocean. 
18,000 tons of metal will travel 300 kilometers into the Gulf of Mexico. Here it will form the base for a state-of-the-art floating oil rig that will tap into three newly discovered oil fields. Perdido is expected to produce enough oil every day to fill up 150,000 cars with petrol. When it comes online, it will reach deeper into the sea than any other oil rig on the planet. Oil has been the engine of the world economy for over a century, but hardly ever without an impact on the environment. In 1884, the Great American Oil Rush profoundly alters the sleepy town of St. Mary's in Ohio. The lure of a quick fortune brings in a flood of would-be Rockefellers. Within a few months, they completely transform the landscape. Oil rigs spread across the plain to extract the black gold from an oil field over 300 meters below. But one day, their relentless march comes to a grinding halt at the shores of Grand Lake. It is only three meters deep, but it becomes a big obstacle for the drilling crews. Engineer Ed McCann demonstrates why. It's curious, but drilling in the olden days didn't actually involve drills that we imagined spinning around. They used percussive techniques and banging. And uh, if we have a look at this here, you'll see that all they really did to drill was they lifted a weight up with a point on it and let it fall onto the rock. Then you do it again. And if we look closely at this, what we can see is that we're making a tiny little chip every time. So you have to do this a lot. But once you've got this mechanized, you could do up to 10 meters a day like this, which was plenty and adequate. Now, once they moved this sort of operation out over water and they started looking for stuff that was underneath water, they found themselves in a whole new ballpark. So here we've got our tank of water and we're going to give our percussion drilling another try. I lift up the pile hammer and I drop it and you can see immediately it's not going nearly as fast through the water. The other thing that's happening is it doesn't go down straight, it tends to deviate off. And this is essentially because the water provides more resistance to the falling pile hammer than air. And frankly, I could carry on doing this for the rest of time and I wouldn't dig a very big hole. Fortunately, there is a solution, and it's this. So the way that this works is, is the tube is basically pushed down into the soil, so it forms a reasonable seal there. Then you pump the water out, and the pile hammer is then able to act as if it was in dry air. So let's see what happens. I've got my tube here, and we can see pretty much straight away that it's back towards the fall velocities that we had when it was in open air. And what's more, it's hitting right on the spot. This simple tube gets the oil men past the watery barrier. They build wooden platforms for their drilling equipment and drill down into the bed of the lake. Steadily, they chip away at the rock until they finally break through to the oil. Within just a few years, hundreds of rigs spring up on Grand Lake, which becomes the birthplace of the offshore oil rig. While the base of the Perdido rig is still on its way to the oil field, an exploratory drilling rig, the Clyde Boudreau, is preparing the ground at the site. Perdido will tap into 35 different wells, and the men on the Clyde Boudreau are pre-drilling 22 of them. Clyde Boudreau has a drill with a twist in its tail. As it plows through the rock under the rig, there comes a point where it needs to change course. 
Operators on the surface remotely activate a motor in the drill pipe, which bends it sideways and pushes it out horizontally. This way, the Clyde Boudreau builds a web of oil wells that extends to the farthest reaches of the oil fields, 20 kilometers across. The Clyde Boudreau's drilling crew can drive through over 300 meters of rock every day. Since the rig started work, its drills have been turning 24 hours a day, seven days a week. After three days at sea, the base of Perdido arrives at the oil field. Now the crew get ready for the next stage of the operation. Today they will install the bottom half of the rig, called the spar. On Perdido, we decided to build a spar because that would give us the stability that we needed. And the spar is basically a can. The problem with the can shape is that when it floats, it wants to naturally float in this orientation, right? And uh, we need it to be in this orientation. The crew faced the mammoth task of upending 18,000 tons of steel. They released the air from the flotation tanks and then pumped seawater into the bottom end of the spar. This flips the whole structure into an upright position. And now they must attach it to the ocean floor, thousands of meters below. Instead of driving impossibly long steel piles, the engineers at Perdido use ropes and chains to hold the rig in place. But they need something to secure the ropes on the seabed. So they attach huge metal cylinders to the end of the ropes. Once these cylinders, called suction anchors, reach the sea floor, the engineers use clever physics to drive them into the ground. This is what's called a spud can or a suction anchor. It's used to secure oil rigs like the Perdido to the ocean floor, but obviously at about 50 times the size. If I turn on this vacuum pump, you can see it creates a suction. So I do the same in the water. If I place it on the ocean bed, which this represents, initially it only goes into its depth under its own weight, so it's hardly getting into the ocean floor at all. But as I pump out the air in the water, it draws itself down into the ocean bed, creating a firm anchorage. There it's now secure, and obviously at about 20 feet diameter, a group of those will provide an extremely firm anchorage, which would be almost impossible to pull out. Suction anchors are the perfect solution for anchoring deep water platforms like Perdido. But activating a suction pump at the bone-crushing depths below the rig is impossible for human divers. So the engineers use robotic divers, called ROVs, to do the job. An operator four kilometers away maneuvers the ROV towards the suction anchor and attaches a pump. This removes the water and creates a vacuum that sucks the anchors down and locks Perdido's foundations into the seabed. 